Good morning, my name is Anthony Wood. I'm the Executive Director of the Council on Toll Buildings and Urban Habitat. Okay, so I'd like to welcome everybody here to the um, annual awards event of the Council. I'd like to welcome everybody to Chicago, uh, especially those people who have come from out of town. If anybody arrived this morning in Chicago, then I'd like to tell you that the weather is like this in Chicago every day. Beautiful. If anybody was here yesterday, they'll know that that's not quite true. Um, so uh, we've got a brilliant program um, today. I think our awards program has grown in stature each year. Um, and one of the things that we've done over the past couple of years is, 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 is give more prominence to the, to the finalists um, that have been submitted for the awards as well. So uh, each year we have the awards program and, and in each of the four regional categories, Americas, Asia and Australasia, Europe, Middle East and Africa, we recognize one winner, um, but we also recognize a number of finalists. And really, the finalist status is saying that's a project that was deserving of being a winner, and in another year, it probably would have won. And so for the first few years of doing this, we concentrated on the winners, um, and this was kind of like a, a half-day symposium. And over the last couple of years, we've extended it to be a, you know, virtually a full-day event and feature some of those finalists within the program. Um, in, the, in addition to that, we've also created two new awards over the last couple of years, an Innovation Award and a 10-Year Performance Award. So you're going to be hearing from the, from the, the teams behind uh, those um, award-winning uh, innovations and projects uh, today as well. Um, I, you know, one thing that amazes me, anybody that was in our Shanghai conference last year, or indeed the London conference this year, will know that when we pull together a two or three day event, um, Shanghai sold out with a month ago last year, and there were 850 people from 40 odd countries all around the world, and, and, and that is typical of a CTBH event. I think what's perhaps not so typical but changing is the, is the, is the way that this event is, is, is gaining in prominence. And so um, we pulled together some statistics uh, last night on attendance. And today, at some point during the day or the dinner tonight, there will be 773 people. That's what we had registered, either for the symposium and or the dinner, which represent 24 countries, 84 cities, and 156 organizations. So I, you know, for me, for a, for a three quarters of a day symposium in Chicago, that's really amazing, and I think it, it shows that that you know the quality of the awards and the, and the emphasis that the industry is increasingly putting on the CTBH awards. So that's found fantastic. I also want to recognize many of the CTBH leaders who are in attendance today. So we take this opportunity to also convene our leaders from around the world, trustee, trustees, board of trustees, advisory group, and our global representatives. And this year, they have a, a, an even more important reason to be here, not only for the annual leaders meeting, but as many of you are aware, on Friday afternoon, the height committee, which consists of those bodies, will be convening together to discuss the issues around height, which have been brought up um, specifically by the World Trade Center One Tower in New York. So uh, pretty important day tomorrow as well as today. Um, very briefly on the council, I hope most of you are members, and I, I hope you've seen that the council has gone from strength to strength. Uh, actually, there's an amazing statistic. I find this amazing. Um, David Scott is on the front row. Since David Scott became chair in February 2006, that's seven years ago, there has not been a single month where we have not brought in new organizational members to the council. The membership of the council over the last, last almost eight years has quadrupled in both number and the support that we get, which enables us to do all the things that you're seeing today. Um, so hopefully you have seen the product of that in terms of the output of the council, whether that's conferences or publications or research or awards or, or many of the other things that we do. Um, in terms of support, I would also li like to just emphasize that uh, a number of companies have, have sponsored a table at the dinner tonight. Um, and, and you will see those, those sponsor logos um, in various places, on the brochure in various other places. I want to emphasize why that is really important. And I think a lot of people, especially when their PAs register, register for this event, don't realize that this is a 100% free event. 
There are no registration fees to attend this one-day symposium, or for the coffees, or for the lunch, or anything like that. Um, and, and, and we feel really proud that we are able to do that, that we are able to put on this, what we think is a high-quality event, with speakers and, and, and all the other things, at, at no cost to, to our members and others from the, from the, from the local community. Um, we can only do that because, basically, companies support us by sponsoring a table at the dinner. It's now my honor um, to welcome up to stage the uh, awards chair for this year. We, we've worked with some really great awards chairs over the past few years. Actually, Tim Johnson was our uh, awards chair back in 2005, 2006, when, when, when David was chair. Um, and by the way, if you want to get involved in the council at a more detailed level, that's kind of the way to do it. You know, get involved in one of, one of the activities. Um, and then after that, we had Gordon Gill from Adrian Smith and Gordon Gill Architects as chair for a couple of years. And then the last two years, we've had Rick Cook um, from Cook and Fox Architects. And this year, we asked Jeannie Gang from Studio Gang Architects here in Chicago, who I think has built one of the, the best tall buildings here in Chicago for, for, for a long time, the Aqua Tower, to be the awards chair. And um, without, at the risk of, you know, without embarrassing her too much, I'd just like to say it's been an absolute pleasure to work with Jeannie and her sensitivity towards the buildings and the awards and the discussion that occurred. So I'd like you to uh, join me all in, in welcoming and thanking Jeannie Gang up to the stage. Thank you. Uh, and Jeannie's actually going to take us through, uh, she's going to give some uh, a welcome as the awards chair, and then she's going to take us through and chair the first session. So, Thank you, Anthony. Thank you. Thank you very much. Hello, everyone. It's, it's Welcome to Chicago. It's great to have such distinguished engineers, architects, and building, other building professionals, developers in our city, and we're really happy to have you here. Um, I just want to start by saying uh, thank you to Anthony and CTBUH for assembling such a great jury um, to analyze and, and discuss sometimes heated discussions about these projects. And so I wanted to thank the, the other jurors, some of whom are here. So Richard Cook, as Anthony mentioned, from Cook Fox, he's not with us today, but um, was part of the jury as well. Nanjing Lau from uh, CIDIC, Hay Deven um, investments in Beijing, Robert Okpala from Bureau Happel from Dubai, um, David Scott, who had you know very a very good perspective, having been involved with CTBH for so long, um, from Lang or Rourke in London, Karen Weigert, she's the Chief Sustainability Officer for the City of Chicago and Anthony uh, Wood from CTBUH. So we had some great discussions. One of, one of the things I think was, I really took away from our debates um, was just a realization that tall buildings are now kind of the new normal. Um, when, when this organization first started, you know, we only saw tall buildings that were iconic buildings that represented corporations. And today, they are really expanding in terms of the typologies that we see in tall buildings. So we saw buildings, everything from hospitals to places of work and living and even schools and residence halls. Um, there, it's just a signal that we really need to, as, as a community, address this building type and, and think about it in fresh new ways because we are all going to be living with tall buildings um, in the years to come more and more frequently and in many different building types. So it was interesting to see that spread of types. Um, we also noticed that one of the difficulties in judging the buildings, and we ask for a lot of criteria from uh, people who submit and the people who are nominated, um, is the need to have more measurement on the performance of the buildings. And sometimes that's hard, especially when the buildings are new, and which is the ones we are awarding tonight. But um, with this new category, the 10-year category, it would be great to have more information about how these buildings perform. Um, and, and we realize that there is certain proprietary aspects to um, energy use, and people are afraid to share these stats. But I think it's one thing that really needs more transparency, and it will bring everybody up if we can start to get those numbers out there. 
Um, I am very excited to be chairing the first or the first session today. There is not a theme to this other th other than the fact that these are awards uh, for different regions. They were finalists in the different regions, including the Americas, Europe, and the Middle East and Africa. And as well, we are going to hear from our uh, winner from the Lifetime Achievement Award. So at this moment, I would like to invite to the stage, and we can give everyone a round of applause at the same time, uh, Henry Cobb, B.K. Boley, Roberto Meyer, and Gurjit Singh. Come on up. <laughs> And as they are approaching um, and coming up to the table, and what we are going to do is have each person is going to be presenting their uh, projects for 20 minutes. And then afterwards, there are going to be a Q&A session that we can uh, take questions from the audience. And we have microphones out up here that will be passed back. And we ask that you speak directly into the microphone so that we can hear the, the questions. Um, and we'll have a little time for that discussion. Um, so everybody's here, and I'm really excited and very um, honored to be able to introduce Henry Cobb. He's a founding partner of Pay Cobb Freed and Partners, and and he is you know someone who has been a leader in the field of tall buildings and even institutional buildings. But as well as that, I think someone who is really committed to um, education, teaching, and mentoring that next generation, someone who is a mentor for me, and I'm, it just gives me great pleasure to introduce to you Henry Cobb. Thank you.